Yesterday at the Virginia Beach IANS group, we had the most incredible speaker. And I'm closer. Yes. Oh. <laughs> and I'm so excited that she's going to speak here this morning. My dear friend Yvonne Spaden had an amazing near-death experience, and she has so much to share about it. She is. Uh, she was raised in Brussels, Belgium. She speaks with a French accent. She's a native French speaker, and she, uh, or she had a, a very successful career in diplomatic circles. She moved here to the states about uh, eight or ten years ago, and now she has a successful career in the IT industry. But since her near-death experience, she has found a calling to talk about what she experienced and what she learned. And she also has focused on something that most people don't hear about, which is the after effects of a near-death experience. What does the experiencer go through and try to integrate that into their daily lives? And how does it, how does it impact and affect the people around them? who suddenly may be faced with a person that they don't think they even know anymore. So she and uh, another md -er are have been working on co-producing a documentary called Back from the Light about the after effects. We were lucky enough to see um, a preview of it. It's not, it's not ready for distribution yet. It should be out, we hope, in the next year or so, but that's what she's working on now. So, I'm so excited to introduce to you my dear friend and fellow NDE experiencer, Yvonne Sneedon, who came from Raleigh. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, it's a real honor to be here with, uh, with everyone. It's a bit uh, intimidating, so thank you for your patience with me. Um, this is a very beautiful place to be. Um, I could really, really feel um, the love and the acceptance and, and, and the beauty of, of every soul here. It, it was just a beautiful morning. Uh, it's uh, going back in the gates of heaven. So thank you so much. Uh, I've, I've been um, blessed to meet very beautiful people here uh, yesterday during the, the conference, the, the meeting. Who was there with me yesterday? Um, thank you. So, so I hope you have enjoyed it. And um, thank you for your patience today, because I will be sharing again my journey in heaven. So uh, thank you for, for your patience today to, to hear it again a uh, second time. Uh, my beautiful daughter is with me today as well. And I'd like her to stand. and. Uh, um, and Louise. And thank you for, she wanted to be with me, it's Mother's Day, and uh, she wanted to accompany me. What a gift. Um, I'm a mother uh, and um, a single mother, so I've been the mother and the father, and it has been a beautiful journey. Um, also, would like to, to thank um, Ellen and I for enabling me to come here uh, today and to inviting me to that uh, to that whole weekend, which was really beautiful. And meeting Neil and other people, Jeff who was very nice as well, and just met a beautiful soul, Heidi. Uh, thank you so much for all this love and patience. So, well, that's it. An introduction. Um, my, um, I'll try to be very, uh, to, to share as much as I can in a small, smaller time. Yesterday we had two hours, so I'll try to just give you the best of the experience. Um, I grew up in Europe, as uh, Ellie was saying, in, in Belgium, and I moved to France. And uh, my life has been, uh, since childhood, uh, I had a lot of challenges and hurdles in every aspect you can find, uh, every trauma you can think of. And um, later on, uh, after, I would like to focus on the near that experience, that's why I'm trying to rush into it. Uh, so um, after my childhood, I went to work, uh, went to college, politics and languages. 
and uh, made them double major and ended up working for the diplomatic, diplomatic world in an embassy in Europe. So I've been uh, traveling a lot for, for that purposes and um, traveled the world, saw the biggest people in the world, queen and queens and kings and, and ambassadors and I felt that I had arrived really at the peak of uh, what everyone that's thinking uh, that's the peak of it uh, had arrived and I thought because I had, had a childhood with uh, no parents and uh, I had to strive for myself, so I had fine through it, and uh, I had realized what I thought was finally making it uh, in this world and being uh, at the peak of my career after having been a lot alone, struggling to to, to put myself through college and uh, and everything. So, uh, but during that time, I, I realized that there was more to life, and I was looking for that more and. Um, the path, the path that I found was uh, the Christian church, and uh, I dedicated my life uh, to the Christian church, a charismatic Christian, and went to Bible college, became a reverend, uh, became a missionary, was in the ministry for a while, preaching throughout Europe, um, having a radio program, and, and then my divorce came, and uh, in Europe, in the Christian church, when you divorce, uh, you are actually, your ministry is gone. <laughs> because it's all based on the, the family unit and uh, the beautiful family. And uh, So eventually, I went back to work in the world. And uh, with my uh, background in diplomacy, I found a new job at the European Union as a, uh, a, a campaign awareness or organizer and uh, lobbyist which was a great job again at the peak of um, with politicians and diplomats. And um, moved to the US, um, met an American man in my church, in my, in my American church in Europe and moved to the US. And uh, when I was in the US, um, uh, we divorced because he was uh, Mr. Jekyll, uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, I think. That's what you say in English. So, <laughs> So I came here and it was a completely different world and five months later we were divorced and uh, I find myself alone with my daughter uh, having to rebuild a career uh, from scratch. I knew I could so I went back to work in public diplomacy uh, in Raleigh, North Carolina and from there I moved to um, uh, to the IT world, uh, switched completely and an uh, amazing job. Uh, I traveled and I'm back connected with Europe with a job in IT. And uh, but the life, my life had been so so full of events and, and challenges that uh, my heart, uh, I was working hard to to give a, a future to my daughter and uh, and myself. So my heart had taken a toll over the years and. Uh, I, I, did, I developed uh, arrhythmia and I went to the cardiologist and uh, he, provide, he gave me some, uh, some uh, medication for, uh, for the heart uh, whenever I had those crises. And uh, the medication plus uh, my life uh, challenges and ordeals uh, brought me to the most amazing journey of my life. Um, I experienced two near-death experiences. Um, uh, those medication actually uh, can provide you uh, sleep apnea or heart stop, oh. and I got both experiences. So uh, uh, within a month, and um, the first one, I, I was uh, getting ready to sleep, laying on my bed, and um, suddenly I saw myself uh, above my bed. And I saw two angels, being of light, waiting for me at the end of my bed. The room had disappeared, and they were in long white robe of light. And they said, Yvonne, it's time to go home. Come with us. It's time to go home. And um, I said, yes, uh, I'm going. Um, I was ready to go. Uh, I felt that was the right thing to do. Um, it felt very natural to me to just go home. It was uh, the best thing I could, I, 
it's like I was explaining yesterday, um, when you slip out of your body of this rea reality and you enter the reality of heaven, uh, on, on the other side, the other realm, uh, you actually uh, are completely in a natural, in a real, uh, it's all natural. You don't, um, you don't actually wonder what, what happened to me, who am I, where am I, and, and be so, uh, so, so, you know, startled. You are actually feeling that the, the progression is very normal, actually. And uh, those two angels took me uh, with them. They were sitting on each side, uh, and I was in the middle. And we just flew, like, uh, in a split of a second. We were here, and in a split of a second, we were in a, we, we crossed the whole universe. And we arrived in a place of full light. Everything was lit up. And there were about 30 to 40 people welcoming me. They were so happy to see me coming back home. They were actually, um, they were there actually to welcome me. They, they knew me from before I came on earth. And at that moment I knew that actually I had existed before I was, I, I was here on earth. I had existed because they were actually there saying, she's back, she's back. She's really bad. And, and they were excited, and I was excited. I felt actually that I was coming back home. And I was with my people, with my friends, with my soul group. Somebody said soul group yesterday, Neil told me that. I was with my soul group. And uh, they were so excited. I was, I felt like I was home with a capital H. I was finally home. And, and I felt that everything I had experienced here on earth that was just a, a, a huge nightmare. It was just uh, the past, and, and, and I said, that was a horrible nightmare there. I said, I don't know what happened, and I'm so, I'm so happy to be home. And, and we were, there were a lot of structure. We went in a building that looked like a living room, but everything, the floor, uh, the table, the chairs, the, the sofas, every single thing was lit up from the inside out. It was all very, very glorious, actually, very illuminated. And the beings that were talking to me were all illuminated. And we, you know, when you go to a party and you want to talk to everybody and, and it's really excited, everybody's excited, and, and we meet our best friend, and that's how the feeling was. It was a feeling of a celebration, and they were celebrating my coming. And uh, that was amazing, especially I'm not used to be celebrated. I'm a single mom, hardworking. I, I don't have a husband who validates me every day. Or, I mean, if we are lucky, because I know that everybody has a husband that validates them every day. You know? <laughs> I mean, that's another, another topic, actually, that would be interesting. <laughs> So, uh, but, you know, I was the center of their welcoming and I enjoyed everyone talking to them like longtime friends that I had not seen for a long time and we were just catching up. And uh, suddenly uh, one of the ladies, just one of the ladies that was with them took me uh, apart, put her hands on my, on my cheeks. I always remember her and she looked at me and she said to me, oh, Ivan, my goodness, she said, your experience on planet Earth is such a difficult one. And I said, oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, you know, because it's been, uh, it was just, um, I, I didn't grow up with my parents, uh, I had to raise myself, I went to put myself to college. So it was really a hard life, uh, you know, we always say that when we go to heaven, we come on earth, we come to experience a few certain things, and I think that when we come, we, we decided already before we came on earth what we wanted to, to actually experience. And I think that the more you want to experience loss and grief and abandonment, or you learn so much through it, and it makes you grow so much as a human being, but as a soul and as a spirit, uh, so uh, I just want to encourage that when you go through a, a stressful situation, a challenge, a hardship, something that's really hard, usually our first, our, our first um, reaction will be to stress out. Oh my gosh, that's happening. And we start to stress out and then we bring all those negative emotions around us and energy and then we are stressed. 
And that will create a wall through the experience you want to experience. But even if it's a challenge, even if it's hard, and you connect with the, you just connect back with the light, and you just get that peacefully, you will notice that you go through any hard and horrible things just smoothly. You just let, you let yourself go through the challenge without finding it, and and it will be so much easier. So that's uh, I had to come back. She said you have to go back because before. Uh, before your body cannot take it anymore, you have to go back on your in the body. Uh, before you know, you have a certain time before the body cannot be reconnected with the soul and the spirit, and that's what she was trying to say. You have to go back, otherwise that vehicle, that body, will not be usable anymore, and you have to stay here. And it's like my mission was not done, so I came back uh, on earth. The, the two angels came back to drive me back uh, on earth. And um, the same month, I, I felt that I was going to die. I felt it during the whole month there. I felt that my body was exhausted um, before the first ND and during the second ND. I really felt that uh, all the energy that we have to live, actually we don't realize it, but we all have a very powerful strength to stay here on Earth, to connect with Earth. Because if we would really say we are checking out, we can check out, but we have a tremendous willpower to stay here, even if we are in our darkest hours and we say we want to we want to die and everything. Even when we say that, we still have the living energy to stay here. It's connected to you and you're staying here. But uh, at that time, during uh, that month, that will energy had completely been depleted. And it was like, you know, the battery you put in those, uh, uh, in any of your um, equipment. At some point when it starts to die, uh, it's, you die. And that's what happened to my body. I really felt that all that energy of life was actually completely depleted. And it was, I was leaving the earth, and I was very happy for it. I mean, I felt extreme peace about it. I even called my sister in Europe, uh, and I told her, I think I'm going to die. And I'm okay with it, which is, doesn't make sense, because if now I'm thinking I'm going to die, I will think of my beautiful daughter, that I want to stay here on earth. But at that moment, I felt that it was okay for me to die, and I even told her, um, I I made sure to buy extra pija, PJ, pyjama dresses to in case somebody finds me dead, I look beautiful. <laughs> 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 I don't know what you think, but in those moments, I mean presentable, not beautiful, but presentable. <laughs> and uh, so uh, here I was every day preparing the moment, and then one day, we, when I was not preparing it, I was actually laying uh, on uh, my sofa reading, reading a book, um, and uh, the Bible actually, and uh, as I was reading it, suddenly I felt uh, my organ starting to shut down, but at the same time I slipped out and I was translated instantly in the light. So I didn't suffer. And this can be very normal. I think uh, Ellen Dye had a, uh, when she had her own near death ex uh, experience, she had an accident and she was uh, automatically out of her body. So it's almost like you don't feel the impact. You're already out of your body. And for the, not for everybody, but that was my experience. I think that was Ellen Dye's experience as well and other people. So I was instantly translated in that amazing, beautiful, heavenly light, which was actually filled with, um, it, the whole light was vibrant of life. Uh, in that light, uh, the feeling of utmost love, utmost joy and happiness was actually permeating the whole environment and it permeated me. I felt completely whole, I felt completely in peace and completely joyful and excited. 
While I was there, um, just in that state of, of completely uh, utmost um, bliss, that's all I can say, a, a, a very dynamic, vibrant bliss, <laughs> Uh, when I saw I saw somebody come towards me, and um, that that being that was actually coming was a being of uh, of light, but it was not a being so to say. It was an energy of light moving and hovering and flying and whirling all in that atmosphere. It's just like when you look at the flame in the fire, and that flame is actually moving in all the directions, that's actually how that spirit was looking like. But instead of fire, it was light. And it was just moving and whirling all around me. And you can imagine, this is, I'm in the light. And that being is even brighter than the light. And it's moving around and whirling around me, coming above me with the most that being is full of love and kindness and full of goodness, full of gentleness and that being is, is coming all around me and, and, and just embracing me and, and looking as if I was the most precious being that has ever existed and that's how we are all loved actually it's not only me, during that experience that's how we all are loved and that being surrounded me with, with passion and with love and with kindness and goodness. And actually, when it, when it actually permeated it completely, it engulfed me completely. And that's, at that moment, I knew instantly, this is Jesus. The goodness, the love, the beauty, the gentleness, the good, especially the goodness, uh, the, the beauty, the purity, the excitement. And he was all in the awe to see me. He was in the awe. He said, wow, that's my baby, that's my child, that she's with me. And when he was embracing me, I felt that I was in the arms of my ideal parents, which I never had on earth. And it was, and many of us didn't necessarily have ideal parents. And this, he was my ideal parent. He was, it was not a he, he was, it was not a, a she. Jesus had both love perfectly united as one. He was a mother and he was a father. And it makes all sense, because on this earth, love has been divided as the motherly love and the fatherly love. And we can see we, that beautiful young, young girl shared how beautiful her mother, how nurturing her mother was, how loving she was, and those are all attributes of a uh, woman's attributes. We are very nurturing. And even women that never had children have that nurturing uh, feeling and, and personality. We always want to nurture, we always want to care, we always want to seek that everyone is okay. And um, so, but the, and the man's love is a man that is a love that protects. It's a, a love that organizes, makes sure that everything's going to be okay. Uh, it's a love that's strong and strength, and, uh, and, and but both together, each love alone is uh, is not complete, completely. But in us, we do have both love. We have the the female love and the masculine. Uh, love. We have the feminine love and the masculine love. Unfortunately, in our society, we have been actually castrated of the other gender love. I feel like men have been a lot castrated of their feminine love. Because they had to be strong, they had to provide, they had to show, they had to be. 
and they were not allowed a lot to explore that feminine love that they had in them growing up and somehow in the journey they had to shut it down otherwise they would look like sissies and, and there's those all those determine uh, all those uh, things that comes like on, you cannot go and watch a chick film uh, I know all those things I learned here when I moved to the US because I never knew there were something like a chick film uh, and so until I moved here because I uh, you know, uh, I'm from France, French people, are, French men are kind of romantic, so they go and watch tick film. And, uh, and, uh, and so I learned all those things, but in heaven, I understood that we both have, and women, when we are too masculine, we like to climb and do all kinds of things. So uh, we also look like that's not feminine, and uh, uh, so we can be those two, because in heaven, Jesus, had combined both love as one. And we have those both, and we are free to explore who we really are. And we can, and men can cry. Women can be strong. We are strong. We can embrace that whole personality. But of course, as long as we are on earth, the two different gender love are highlighted because we came here to explore those roles and we can embrace, but uh, it is all one. And that's what I understood when I was in Jesus' arm. We are, the love is perfected when both come into one unit. And that's how God's love is. God loves, is, God is a mother, God is a father. So I was in his arms and also he was so, you know, like a newborn child. He loved me so much and he was so impressed and so, uh, you know, the first time you hold your baby, you look at it and you just don't dare to touch too much and you're just careful and that's how he was with me. And then he was kissing me all over my face and kissing my lips. Uh, like, uh, will you kiss a newborn baby? There was absolutely no, nothing sexual about that. It was just pure. Uh, this is my baby. And I felt completely safe, completely protected, completely loved, and completely cherished. Uh, after that moment, I felt that it was time for me to come back on Earth. He wanted me to come back, and I, I just quickly said, well, I don't want to come back. Uh, uh, I'm in a bad relationship on Earth. Uh, <laughs> I got somebody there, who, a guy there, that actually, it's not working. Uh, I don't know what to do. I've been praying every day if there's the will of God or the will of God. So uh, here I am. What do I have to do with, with, with Steve? That's another name. Uh, so uh, what I have to do? I didn't. I don't want him to recognize himself if I already watched that video one day. Uh, so <laughs> it was Steve. Uh, so, uh, and, and as I had, so anyway, he said to me, um, so I asked him what do I have to do with Steve and uh, if I have to go back. And uh, so he moved from being embracing me and being that light and he shaped himself as uh, a human being, but still very ethereal. You know, being translucent, but you could see the feature now. And uh, he opened up a screen uh, with um, two, four, uh, two, you know, those uh, survey that you have with yes and no. And there's a little square uh, window where you have to tick. And <laughs> So here he's in the air and he has a, with a screen and then he ticked the no and he said to me to confirm, he says, you have to say no. You have to say no. But he wasn't, uh, as I was explaining yesterday, he wasn't absolutely condemning Steve or me or saying that I'm such a better person because, uh, you know, uh, so, but he said you have to say no. And I said, and I said, but why? And while he was saying that, it's very important. He was simultaneously showing me how much love he had for Steve, how um, the same love, because unconditional love is actually equal. There is no measure in love in heaven. Everyone is loved at the same measure, 
Everyone is, in lo is, is included in the same love measure. We are all loved the same when there's nobody that's left behind. Here on earth, we always have our little cliques, you know, and there's that new person. I'm not sure I want to include that new person in my circle, but in heaven, there is not that reality. We are all together, and we are all equally loved. And uh, so uh, I asked him why Steve was so mean to me, and he said it's because he has decided to live on Earth, focusing on his mind, uh, his journey on Earth. So he was only was mainly focusing on his reasoning, the mind, the reason, uh, and I had decided to focus on my heart. So everything that I was doing was just more uh, geared towards my emotions and through my, 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 my emotion and my heart. And not, nothing was better. He didn't say, well, you're such a better person because you go through your heart. No, he said, uh, it's just a fact. That's how it is. And that's why both of you will not, it's not a good match. Uh, you always clash. Uh, you always have your heart hurt. He's always going to say, "Okay, she hurt me. I'm going to hurt her back," and, and <laughs> they will never work. So, um, so eventually, after that moment, uh, we. Um, I also, I have to say, that I also asked uh, Jesus why uh, there was why people were racist on Earth because it was concerning me firsthand. I ask Jesus, but why are people in all the races in the world? I have traveled the world. I've been to Asia, I've been to Latin America, I've been throughout Europe, I've been in Africa through my uh, former life and my job. And I ask, and I've seen that ostracizing feeling, and I said, why are people all and so, so much racism? Which is interesting to ask in heaven. Um, and their answer, I know that it was Jesus, because I would have never come up with that. Uh, he said, because I would have come up with you know, some other things, and he said to me, it's because of selfishness and self-centeredness. And I would have said, yes, yeah, it's anger, it's fear, it's rejection, it's trauma. It's a bringing, anything like that, but not self-centeredness. And, and it's for each category of race. We're not talking about one. We're talking about every single race around the world. And he said, because when you self, when you're focusing on yourself, you want somebody that looks like you. Uh, you feel comfortable and safe with somebody that looks like you. You, you feel more comfortable, you feel safer, because you feel like you can understand one. So, so the point of comparison is you, is me, is me, me, me. And, and when we can get out of that me focus, and we say, I want to explore what's different. I want to see who, what is different. And I have been in places uh, where I have seen difference, and I have had racism, I have seen other races, my ex-husband was Caucasian, and we went to the uh, Caribbean, and uh, he experienced racism, so I mean, it's not, um, so it's because people are afraid of the unknown, because we've been so, um, so pushed down in this world, we've been so uh, belittled, we've been so suppressed, we've been so heard or we've seen things that were hurtful. So all those fears, we have actually refocused on ourselves as a survival mode, unconsciously. And, and, and that's what I learned and I said, okay, so which is what's good for me because it really helped me in life to know that it's not about me, really. It's something that the person still has to grow in, in the journey and learn and dare to, to get to step out of his her comfort zone and say so there is so much to learn because it's an exciting world we've been put here to explore and to play it's our playground and then one day we'll go and be graduated uh, and we will come back in heaven and we'll teach other souls what we have learned on earth 
we are going to be teachers to souls in heaven that has never come on earth. They have, there's a huge, there's a huge population in heaven. Uh, you can imagine here on earth we have, uh, I don't know, eight billion, I don't know even how many. And imagine that heaven is 500 trillions. So you imagine that, the, I mean, just to give a comparison, so we are hero here on earth, traveling on this earth, experiencing adversity, experiencing challenges, rejection, sickness, diseases, uh, you know, all kind of challenges, but everything is not free. Every single challenge, every single wound is a treasure that we are taking back with us. And when we will be in heaven, we'll be able to explain what it brought us, what it made us learn, how we grew from it. And it will help people that are pure in heaven, beings that have never experienced evil and anger and, and, and anything like that, that have always lived in the light of God, always been beautiful to each other, loving, inclusive. It's going to help them understand all that concept. And so, after, after that moment with Jesus, uh, we, he, we made our way towards heaven. So we made our way out of that light mist. And as we were getting out, I saw from a distance an amazing, beautiful, heavenly city, which I called the Crystal City or the Celestial City, or some, some people say Paradise. Uh, and I saw that from a distance, it was, there, was, there was a big avenues and very tall, uh, very tall buildings made of crystal. It looked like it was made of crystal because it was so shiny and gold and, and it seems like it was uh, permeated by a, a huge sunshine without the sun. It was very bright. As if you were in the summer, I said that yesterday, but it's true, when you're on vacation and you have, you're worry-free, uh, you're on vacation, job is, uh, your job, your, uh, your stress is over, and you're just enjoying the beauty of your vacation. That's how heaven feels, you are on eternal vacation. It's just beautiful, happy, and I was making my way very excitedly to go there with, with Jesus on my side, who had again changed form. And now he was more like the Jesus we know on earth. He had that robe. He, had, he was about six foot, brownish hair. And he was walking on my left, and we were, he was taking me to, uh, to the Crystal City. And suddenly on my right, I felt like some other people were walking. You know when you walk in the street, you feel when somebody comes and then you turn around. And, I turned around and I saw uh, a dozens of, uh, of children angels and um, they were about between 9 and 11 years old and they were all walking very busy, they were going on their way. Uh, heaven, as I said yesterday, it's a, very, it's a very vibrant environment. Everybody is busy doing something, learning something, exploring something. Uh, a lot of them in heaven that never came on earth are actually exploring things that will come on earth. They are creating things that a doctor will find an illness cure or so, uh, some computer guy will find a, a, new, uh, a new way to, uh, to tackle a virus, a bug. Or, so, um, so it's all created over there. We, we, it's an amazing, very busy world. And, uh, so eventually, um, I turned around and I saw those uh, angels, and, and they looked at me, and they were all in white robe. Uh, most of us, when we see heaven, for some reason, everybody's in a white robe, a long white robe of light, kind of, it's very glowy. And those little angels, uh, to, for those who want to visualize it, uh, they were the ones I saw because there are many angels, many entities in, the, in heaven, many realms, many... Uh, it's just a vast and huge and many levels uh, of places, many realities. <coughs> And those angels were at a very round face. They had like a bronzy color, uh, goldies, and the hair were kind of gray, silverish. That's how they presented themselves to me. And uh, as they were walking, they looked at me like, uh, oh, Yvonne is here. Uh, it's not a big deal. <laughs> She's walking in heaven. And then when they saw Jesus, and I, I always see that, that scene, 
uh, the, one of them looked at Jesus and his face shone like the, like the sun. It became really like a bright light. That's why I know we are all initially beings of light. We are made of light and we can take forms in heaven, the forms we want to take, but we are light. We are God's light and we, we are particle of God's light and uh, we are his children. Uh, or creator, or I mean, I don't know, source you can call, it. it's all the same reality. And, uh, they, but when they saw Jesus, they sh this one shone, and, and he ran into Jesus' arms, the other one too, and Jesus just took them all into one. And that's the amazing thing in heaven, you can take ten people in one in your arms, and they all feel like they are the only one taken in, uh, embraced. Uh, that's how beautiful heaven is. And, uh, and then Jesus told him, with all the love he could give them, without trying to separate them from, from him or from me, he said, it's Yvonne's moment. It's Yvonne's moment. Go back to your teachers. And when I turned around, I saw um, the most beautiful, very beautiful, women angels, women beings. Uh, they were all about a dozen as well, all in white robe. I think I saw a couple of pastel colors in it. They all had very, very long hair. And they were just looking at me with that same love Jesus had, that same inclusive acceptance that Jesus had. And they were just pure. And there was a kind of reverence. And I, I don't know why, I don't think it was because of me, I think it was because of Christ being with me and that light and that elevating, or maybe, you know, in heaven, we have reverence for one another. I saw that with the, the, my first NDE, how they were with me and how those angels, there is a reverence, there's respect for one another, for everybody, everybody is respected. There's nobody seen less important, be a little. Everybody is, we feel that they are so much higher than who we are. And they were just looking at me with that love and that peace, that purity, and they said, you're one of us, we love you. They didn't say it with their mouth, it was telepathically, and they said, you're one of us. You are loved. We will never hurt you. We are never going to harm you. We love you. You are one of us. You belong with us. And that's what they were transmitting as they were looking at me. And I felt home. I felt safe. I was with my family. And at that moment, it became almost impossible to come back. And I said to Jesus, uh, after that scene, I said, Jesus, I do not want to go back now. And I have to apologize because by speaking like that, I have hurt my daughter. Because she said, well, I mean, why didn't you want to come back for me? Um, and it is not that we didn't want to come back for her. It's just that when you're in that realm, your memory of what you experience on earth is kind of fading away. Uh, it's almost like you have a memory block of everything. It's difficult to explain. You are so impregnated from that light and from that being that you are, you are mesmerized. But of course, Jesus knew I had to come back for you. And uh, that's why I came back. But at that time, I did not want to come back. I said, um, I don't want to go back in this world. That world, in that world, people are mean, people are horrible, they are selfish, they are self-centered, no one cares for anybody. I said, I don't want to go back to that world, I cannot relate to that, I, I don't want that. I'm here, this is my home, this is my family, this is my people, uh, I, I, I'm home and I'm here to stay. <laughs> and I just, and I even tried to negotiate and I said, <laughs> I said, anyway, uh, my body on earth is broken beyond repair. And I said, I'm beyond exhaustion over there. It's not possible. I, and I just really negotiated that. And, 
and I knew uh, he wanted me. Instead, he said, well, instead he, he just came from here, he expanded in the universe instead. And uh, the whole city disappeared, the whole street disappeared, and we were in the universe type of environment. There is a place in heaven which a lot of experiencers have experienced. It's kind of a void. It's like a blackness, but it's not uh, stressful or, or fearful. And that's when, uh, when he took me there, he, he told me, Ivan, uh, so he, he re regenerated me with his light and his strength for me to go on in life. And then he said to me, uh, when that happened, I was completely regenerated. And then he said, and I'll, I'll close with that, he said, Ivan, I love my people. I love humanity. I love the entire humanity. And then he said, I love my babies. Every one of us he considers as our babies. He said, and I'll show you. And then he said, I love my babies. And it was Jesus beyond religion. Jesus beyond every type of religion that we can find on earth. It was love itself, loving every one of us. And then he said, Yvonne, I'll show you how. He took my heart, placed it into his, so that I could see the love, the compassion, the goodness, the, the beauty, the purity of love that he has for all of us and for myself. Thank you.